guys. Today we are going to review the most expensive John Deere Gator ever made. And it's awesome, man. <laughs> Woo! Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina. And we are off of my farm and on my neighbor's farm. And today we're gonna show you the most expensive John Deere Gator ever made, the 865R. This is the newest, latest, greatest, awesome 865R diesel cab comfort features, insanity, close to 35 grand worth of John Deere Gator. It's the most expensive Gator ever made to date. So come along today as we have a little bit of fun. We'll walk around this Gator, we'll show you the features, we'll take it for a little drive and I'll tell you what I think about it. All right, woo! Stony Bridge. Woo! <laughs> all right boys and girls in all its glory right here is the 865r john deere gator i've got a build sheet in there on this critter and this thing almost cost 35 grand unbelievable at the cost of like a jeep guys post a comment tell me what you think i mean <laughs> Sometimes you gotta spend money, I guess. Sometimes you gotta spend money to save on your taxes. Sometimes you gotta spend money on the farm or pay it to the government. So what are you gonna do? What, what's the toss up there? Tractors are more expensive. Gators are more expensive. All utility vehicles are more expensive. On our farm, we swapped our Gator off and we had an open uh, station John Deere Gator 825i, I believe it was a 2013 model, and we swapped it for the Kubota RTV X1140, which is pretty awesome. I'll post a link at the end of this video to the review of that. Love that machine, little Kubota diesel, does a great job, but this thing is, it's in a different league. Uh, I'm just gonna say it's in a different league. Now, it doesn't come with tinted windows like this. My buddy that bought this thing, tinted the windows he's all about having the nicest coolest thing he's a i don't know a lot of people are like that a lot of people are toy guys he's a toy guy he enjoys things like that he's got a nice new car and he's got this toy so i say toy but it's a tool inside this thing there's a nice plush cab it's like sitting inside the cab of a really nice tractor this has the deluxe cab kit which has the nice cloth seats it has room for three comfortable room for three i'm a six foot five 260 something pound dude and it would fit three of me very comfortably right across that front seat really really cool a lot of good storage solutions inside this gator that weren't in the previous models and you'll see the cab is much wider than the bed now John Deere, why did we put the same John Deere Gator bed on it that's been on John Deere Gators for years and years and years? And when we upped our game here, why didn't we put uh, an, a larger bed on it? I don't know. One of you John Deere guys, I know you're watching right now. Post a comment. Let us know. Share it with us for sure. Uh, we're people too. So without further ado, we're going to show you some of the features and we're going to start from the front and work our way to the back. And once again, guys, there are a number of really awesome features on this Gator. One of the awesome features is the heating and air system, which is housed basically under here for the inside of this cab. So this is the HVAC model. It has heating, ventilation, and air conditioning inside of it. I'll tell you, the heat cranks, man. We used this thing last night to tow a trailer across the farm, and the heat really cranks. We cleaned it up for the video too. It probably has four or five hours on it, something like that. Now you've got the robust bumper right here, and this is the full wraparound bumper. It's a little bit of an ex extra charge, I guess, for the wraparound bumper instead of just this portion of the bumper. This has the winch, which is very nice. It's a worn winch and it has bumps, so you can bump gates open with it. Uh, I think that's an awesome feature to have. I'm constantly just barely bumping gates. I'll close them so the cows don't get out, go feed them, and then when I come out, I'll bump them a little bit. We're gonna crack this guy open, and a lot of clever little innovations are here. So there's a little clevis that you pull right here to release, and there's another one right here, and that clevis just slips out, just like so. And I'll show you, it's really cool how it goes back together. It keeps it from being a rattle trap. So when it goes back together, you slip that clevis in place, and you give the bumper a push. 
and it locks in. So we don't have a rattly brump, uh, front bumper system, which is pretty cool. Now, we're gonna pull that out and then we're gonna pull the whole bumper out this way. Like I said, guys, a lot of clever innovations here. We pull the front bumper out and then there are two tabs. Now, would I rather see, in at this price point, at a, nearly $35,000, would I rather see a handle that I could pull right here and release? And would I rather this not be so floppy? Probably so. There's a rubber tab over here and a rubber tab right here. And then you raise the hood up just like that. And up underneath there is your HVAC. We'll get a look under there together. So under this hood, and again, at this price point, look at what we got here. And it's, I guess, how do I describe this material? It's a rubber matey type material, uh, but it's cool. There are some clever little things going on down here. If you look real close, you can see little clever uh, latches to latch that in place. So a lot of thought has gone into this for sure. I do believe this is the air intake for the HVAC system right here. Use your blower motors, everything you need, your cooling system, all that stuff. And again, this has got heat and air conditioning. This is a little Yanmar diesel engine in this critter, and I believe it's just under 25 horsepower. I believe I think it's rated at 23 horsepower. So we'll close this guy down. And again, the little rubber straps, I'll show you right here. They're pretty clever. There's a lot of cleverness going on right here, but what's that gonna be like in five years? I don't know. Probably a pretty inexpensive part to replace, but what will it be like in five years? And we gotta think about five years ahead and we spend 35 grand on a utility vehicle or 30 grand, whatever your dealer will provide you. So again, we push forward with our bumper and this clever little, little clevis that I showed you earlier, we take both clevises and then we just kind of push and it pops into place, just like that. There's some cleverness going on. And again, we got the winch and we have a two inch receiver down here on the bottom for the front and for the rear. So up here are mounts for two LED lights. John Deere has stepped up its headlight game. I'm gonna turn the headlights on. It's really stepped up its headlight game and there are optional uh, headlights that go in this little reflector type hole, I do believe. There are also mounting brackets for more lights like light bars, LED light bars, and we all know uh, the more light bars, the better. And the same goes for in the rear, you need a work light, especially this time of year when it's really dark. So let me open the windshield a little bit and I'm gonna open the door over here so you guys can see inside the cab. First of all, pushing the button to release the door. Little things make a big difference. Listen to this. That is as tight as a tick. It's really nice. We look right here, we have roll up windows, pretty simple. Uh, do we need power windows at this point, at this price point? I don't know, you guys tell me once again. And these windows have been tinted, so they did not come this way from the John Deere factory. They're about twice as dark. Your release for your door is right here. You've got a cup holder inside the door and the door is removable in case you wanna roll out like a, like a Jeep guy, I guess, in the summertime. There are two bolts right here. And I believe the door comes off in about 10 minutes. Inside the cab right here, We've got really plush seating and we're gonna show you the instrument cluster and everything. It's all digital. Things have changed since the years and the time of the old school John Deere Gator. Lots of things have really changed. Also got a cool toolbox. Again, the little things matter. Listen to how crisp it matters. Let's look inside. Let's talk creature comforts. Look, just like the new John Deere tractors, you can see this seat still got its cover on it, uh, like grandma's old chairs, <laughs> but nice plush fabric, just like the John Deere tractor. I mean, it feels good inside, it's quiet inside. It has a very high quality headliner. I, I'm really impressed with the interior. A nice rear view mirror and I was looking to see if it had a rear view mirror that uh, was dimmable, but it doesn't. So when you sit in here, again, I am a big guy. I'm six foot five and I am very, very comfortable. Now the seat slides forward and it will even slide back further than what we have it. Uh, Ignition is right here. Your heating and air controls are right here. Things are on order for this thing. So a radio is on order. And if we look in the top of the headliner, you'll see places for speakers. So as we turn the key on on this critter, everything illuminates just like a car. It's really impressive. Power steering, check it out. It's electronic assisted power steering. Very cool. Dump bed, electric over hydraulic dump bed. You've got a non-lockable glove box right there. Looks like it has a koozie in it. 
There's also a sticker on the back of this thing that uh, <laughs> you'll, it'll allude to who this is sponsored by in a minute. <laughs> so this is not a sponsored video, but we got a joke in the back in just a second. Lots of storage, tons of storage in here. And my buddy has a Bubba rope. You guys ever heard of Bubba rope before? Let me know, post a comment down there. Inside here, you could use this as a cooler. It's got drain plugs in it. So you could haul around all sorts of beverages for your friends or stuff. <laughs> uh, underneath the driver's seat, on the other hand, there is no storage under here. It's just a standard John Deere Gator. On the back panels right here, we don't have a lot of reverberation in the interior of this machine. In other words, when we go for a ride in a minute, it's gonna be super quiet, guys. The vents, okay, let's talk about the vents. We'll turn the key on, let's see if this thing will work. It won't go without <laughs> running, so we'll start her up. Diesel, again, little Yanmar diesel. These things blow like 900 miles an hour. Just like a Jeep. I don't know if you guys have ever ridden in a Jeep, but those things blow big time. Your engine has to be running again. It has heat and air conditioning. We've got windshield washer, diff lock, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, dump bed, and your lights on and off. Very nice, high quality LED lights. Windshield wiper right here. No windshield wiper in the back. Uh, seat belts. You've got a seat belt for the center guy that mounts up right, right here. You've got one for the guy on the right side, one for the guy in the center, and one for the driver of the vehicle. I'll show you how the windshield releases. There's a little release knob right here, and you can push your windshield up if you want to get some fresh air. It raises all the way up, so it makes a good deer blind, right? <laughs> okay, we'll close this guy down, just like so. And that's the interior. We'll get you a little close-up shot of the gauge cluster, it's really impressive. As if we're gonna drive, we're gonna shut our door nice and firm. That's how you open the door, very nice. It's spring loaded. There is a shock right there. So when you open the door, it's not like you have to think about it. One finger, door opens, awesome. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, the vents are Jeep-esque, okay? They're kinda like the Jeep, but not quite. Not quite as plush, not quite as nice as a Jeep. There will be a radio in this spot, and as I told you, I'll show you the headliner where the speaker cutouts are. Up here's the headliner, and those are the speaker cutouts for the radio. My friend that owns this is putting a radio in it. He's got every single option you could possibly think of going in this thing. And like I said, a nice plush headliner. Very, very nice. You've got a dome light right there too. We've got fully adjustable tilt steering and it's on a little shock too. So you can see right here, it also flexes. Now the old Gator, the 825i did this too. So if you're holding on for dear life bouncing around, that steering wheel will actually flex just a little bit. Hold on, I'll see if I can show you. You can see it has some spring in it. So that's a good thing for sure. We're gonna put the steering wheel to the side and we're gonna look at the gauge cluster. I'm turning the key on and that is the gauge cluster. Very car-esque, I would say, and it's in park right now. It's in two-wheel drive. All I do is hit a switch, and the four-wheel drive light comes on. You can hear a solenoid actuating underneath the vehicle, okay? So right there, four-wheel drive. Now we also have a diff lock button right here. So we can hit the diff lock button. We'll see what it does. Diff lock, it locks the diff. See it in the rear? Very, very cool. And again, this thing has 18 miles on it, so that's all right, 6.6 .6 hours. This is your illumination um, color, how bright it is. So it's at 20%, 40, 60, 80, 100. I don't know what happened to 90 uh, <laughs> or 50. I don't know what happened to the numbers in between, but evidently that's not important. So if you look over here, again, the one touch to open the door, you've got your dump bed, that actuates an electric over hydraulic dump. Your light switch on and off, and I'm assuming these switches right here will be installed when they put the rear work lights on and the front work lights on. Press, brake, and turn the key to start. All these instructions are here. Here's something I think's a little bit funky about this critter. If you look, park is all the way down, reverse is here, neutral, high, and low. To me, it should be park, reverse, neutral, high and low. I foresee a problem, okay? This is backwards, completely backwards to what most people do and what most people handle uh, 
day to day with a, uh, any kind of car. So, and again, this thing is very car-esque, I would say. You've got some awesome cup holders and stuff here. You've got three cup holders for all three occupants. And again, each door has cup holders and each door has a storage compartment. This is glove box. Got a koozie in there for Pepsi's and Cokes, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> you've got a 12 volt charging outlet and a place to put your phone down there or whatever you might be charging. Very cool and plenty of extra spaces to put switches for different types of work lights and stuff that you might have in this machine. That's the inside. Very, very nice. Daddy like. Turn the key off, it times out. Pretty cool. This John Deere Gator has almost every option that you can get. This is the aluminum wheel setup with the Maxxis tire setup. Very, very nice. Better than the steel wheel setup or at least more expensive than the steel wheel setup. I think the color, the John Deere green color, is not an upgrade. The only upgraded color I believe you can get is in camo. And you can also get these, I believe, in a black anodized color. Uh, similar to the yellow. Now, if, as we work our way to the back here, you can see a couple brackets, uh, holes for brackets. Rear view mirrors are on the way, guys. The supply chain for John Deere, the supply chain for every tractor manufacturer and every company is really, really slow right now. I think due to the current situation with the virus around the world, supply chains are very, very slow. As we work our way back, like I said before, maybe John Deere is thinking, I can't fix perfection because this bed is awesome. It's great. You can beat the snot out of it. It has replaceable parts. So if you break this, you can replace it. You break that, you can replace it. You break this, you can replace it. Everything is replaceable. And you'll see this has the optional guard right here to keep you from beating and banging the side of the bed up. I personally chose to not get this guard on my gator because I saw no use for it whatsoever aside from beating and banging into trees and eventually pushing this up against here and causing something to rattle. Now, as we work our way all the way back to the rear, we can show you some of the features back here. In the rear, again, we have the heavy duty bumpers. This is a staple John Deere Gator part right here. This is, <laughs> again, the rear end hasn't changed in a long, long time. This bed design hasn't changed in a long, long time and it's on most of the John Deere Gator lineup. Underneath here, we have a two inch ball. We have a sway bar and we have the new transmission and we've got a spark arrester on our exhaust. We have an adjustable suspension system and right now it's, mm, it's down in the lowest position. So we can actually raise this machine up probably about another half inch to an inch. If we look at the tailgate on this critter, it is not made of granddad's breakable plastic. I can say from experience of owning one of these for about four years, this is tough. This bed is tough. What I do like about the John Deere above and beyond other models like the Kubota is you have a one-handed operation for your tailgate, okay? Now, if I'm coming up to my Kubota and I've got firewood in this arm and I wanna set the tailgate down or a chainsaw or whatever, or something heavy, a bale of hay or a bag of feed, and I want something heavy, then I gotta, I gotta reach for both sides and I can't do it with the gator. It's answered. That question's answered. This has also the optional uh, spray in bed liner, which is another upgrade. Lots of cool upgrades are done to this thing. Again, tip top of the line. This is an optional toolbox. We'll take a look in that. It's loaded up with tools and stuff right now. And I think this says it's Miller time, but I don't really know what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, could be some adult beverages get drank on this tailgate. I don't know. Let's pop this thing up and take a look inside. Again, Details matter, fit and finish matter. So this is nice. It looks like it's powder coated, very, very nice. The only thing that's disappointing in my mind about this is you will have a rattle factor, a little bit of a rattle factor. And if we back up a little bit, you can see that this is not mounted all the way back against the cab because when it opens, it would strike right here on the top of the cab. So, Ah, pluses, minuses, we could move it this far, but if we opened it, it would strike the top of the cab. And right here is where the work lights will go in the rear of this machine. And this whole rear windshield comes off and there is a guard on the way. Like I said, supply chains are not quite up to par right now all over the world for any tractor manufacturer, or any equipment manufacturer. So that's it, let's take it for a drive. 
As I said before, the steering will operate. It is electronic power steering. EPS is otherwise known as EPS. Um, <laughs> I turned it off in reverse. We're gonna start it up. We'll put her back in park. It was a, it's a little difficult, yeah, there we go, to put back in park if you stop it in reverse or in gear. As long as you put your foot on the brake, you can start it in, in most any gear. Now, we're gonna roll, I'm gonna roll the window up. You guys are gonna get an idea of just how quiet it is in this machine as we put it into drive, which doesn't make much sense. Again, <laughs> it's backwards from a regular car. One finger, no problem, fully adjustable on the uh, steering right here. And we're gonna put it to the pedal to the metal here. And you might get a little camera shaky. Nice, very, very nice. It doesn't accelerate, whoop, uh-oh. The naughty boy beeper. <laughs> Evidently it won't go over about six or seven miles an hour until <laughs> you buckle up. So it's got a naughty boy beeper. I, that is a pretty common thing. I do believe my last Gator had that. And this thing has a max speed of around 35. Around 35, I say, because I've been 37 in it. Uh, and it'll probably go a little faster than that. Josh is running the camera over here. How's the Naughty Boy seatbelt? A little annoying. Is it annoying? <laughs> so we're basically just cruising down a gravel road right now. Uh, we're gonna get where we can open it up here in just a second. I don't want to dirty up my friend's machine, but I'm gonna put the pedal to the floor and you guys are gonna realize it's not a rocket ship. That is the pedal to the floor. 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, <laughs> that's what it is, man. It is the CVT transmission. So this does have a belt system in it, but it's just not a powerhouse. It is not a, um, hydrostatic drive like the Kubota, the Kubota RTV that we have. I do like the hydrostatic drive and if I'm going to have something that's slow like a tractor, I like having it on a tractor platform. So I do prefer if it's going to be slow, then it needs to have the hydrostatic drive. That's just my opinion. Let's take off. We're going to go down this gravel road. having a conversation wide open throttle it does great that's something that i cannot say about previous models they were really really loud and my neighbor has a beautiful pond out here we're gonna whip her around we got it in the grass <laughs> thousand dollars that's a lot of money for a utility vehicle for your farm we also have sun visors <laughs> nice cool fun really fun no horn at this price point can you just put a horn in it please John Deere just give me a horn button I want a horn button how fun is it to roll up to the neighbor's house and go meet me <laughs> get with a CVT transmission that you don't get with a hydrostatic transmission. When I let off the gas, and I let off the gas way back there, this thing will coast. It won't put you through the windshield when you let off the gas like a hydrostatically driven machine. So when you let off the gas, it continues to coast versus pushing you through the windshield like the hydrostatic driven. Ugh. You don't get that. Not here. Not with this John Deere Gator. I wish it was about 10 grand cheaper. And we'd probably have one on our farm. <laughs> ah, pretty cool, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this little review of the John Deere Gator. Let's go back and we'll look underneath the rear end. We'll show you that Yanmar diesel engine. Dump bed goes all the way back. 
The cool thing about having electric over hydraulic dump is if you forget and you drain the oil out of this machine, if you just had a hydraulic dump that was powered off the hydraulic system on this machine, which you'd be is in deep trouble. <laughs> you'd have to disconnect this thing in order to rock it back and refill it with oil or run the risk of starting your engine without any oil in it. So I do prefer the electric over hydraulic dump versus just running off the hydraulics of the machine. And again, this is a Yanmar uh, diesel engine in it, made in Japan. Very nice though. Everything looks clean as a whistle and this is the newest transmission model with Park, but it's backwards, kind of strange. I don't know. That's my feedback. So let's shut this down and go up front. So that's a brand new 2021 John Deere Gator 865R diesel, the most loaded model you can get. All the parts and all the goodies aren't quite here yet. I've got two neighbors that just bought one of these. One neighbor lives over the hill and this neighbor lives over this hill. It's an awesome machine. Is it worth it? Guys, post me a comment down there. Tell me what you think. Is it worth it for the cab for three seats? Is it worth it for the creature comforts? Think about the cost of a new tractor, the cost of a utility vehicle like this. Is it worth it? I will tell you this winter when I was riding my ATV across my farm moving hay bales, I sure was wanting a cab. I was, <laughs> I was envying my buddy's utility vehicle here. So guys, thanks a lot. Please pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. If you like stuff like this, we're gonna have more on the channel. We're gonna review all sorts of stuff. We're trying to talk to Caterpillar about getting one of their machines out to the farm so we can do a little demo and review for you on that. Thanks a lot, guys. Pound that like button. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Come on Woo! down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Hey there, folks. We're so surprised. Sorry. Step it up, baby. Hey, there I am. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> okay. I have fun doing this. This is what I like to do. Oh, no, I'm backwards. <laughs> this has the optional green. Blah, blah, blah. It's not, this, this is green. This, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> told you this thing has everything. <laughs> told you this thing has everything and it's thingful things that make us think about things. John Deere Gator 865R. Okay, hold on. <laughs> and it goes backwards, fun too.